Uh, happy to be here. I'm um, excited to be in the Pac-12, um, new challenge, and uh, been been really good to the players that uh, stayed in our program and the, the ones we've added and got a really good group. And we'll open it up for questions now. Hi, Coach. Hi. Uh, you've, uh, you've had success at places where success hasn't been frequent to places like Columbia and USF. What, what makes you confident that you can do the same at Washington State after they've had some down years recently? Um, I think it's been done there before. And I, there's been uh, guys that have, I mean, going back to Coach Raveling, Coach Sampson, <laughs> most recently the the Bennett duo, um, and they did it similar fashion. What you build a program, get and we we chant all the time, just having guys with great attitudes, great work ethic, guys that really want to be there, and that that's the kind of the key. That's kind of been the key to other places we've been, and although one's New York City, one's San Francisco, now Pullman, um, we're gonna find out. If, I don't know if I have the confidence, but we're gonna we're gonna stick with what we do. Yeah, uh, you know, a lot has been made of nerd ball, data rig, whatever. Data rig. Data rig. No, that, that, yeah. that's what <laughs> Either way. Um, but how would you describe it to someone who, who's just hearing that term? Uh, you know, it's just, it's our way of evaluating, getting your, our internal efficiency rating. So mm -hmm. things that we value, what we do, um, and guys that do well in it, they're going to get their opportunities to compete and play. Um, kind of stolen from Texas high school football coaches, or it's really a football thing where they grade out every play. As, in essence, that's kind of what we're doing with basketball and being very transparent with our guys and showing them what they have to do to get better and what they need to do to get on the floor. And then how, how big was it for you to get C.J. Ellaby back after he went through the, the pre-draft process? Great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, people don't know this, and I didn't know what to expect, um, even though we recruited him a little bit at San Francisco. Yeah. Um, better person. Um, he's just really wonderful attitude. Um, he's all eyes and ears. He's, you know, and he has the most to lose by having a coaching change and him to opt back in and embrace what we're doing is special. What, what were those conversations like? On the way back, we didn't have many conversations okay. really. I just, I was, I was like, hey, I'm your cheerleader. You figure out what you need to do. Um, and I think about three days before he had to say whether he's in or out of the draft, I text him and say, hey, we're looking, you know, and yeah. he was he was more on the fence than I, <laughs> than I knew. I didn't know. I was just like, we're, we're trying, we had, we only had five guys retained or whatever, so we're trying to sign nine guys, and I was like, oh, it's good he's coming back. It was really, it was a big thumbs up for us. And then lastly, where would you like to see his game grow this year? I think there is a group, he's doing you know, the same thing. We have to get better defensively to be competitive. I mean, I think we were 291, according to Ken Palm last year which ironically three years ago San Francisco I think was 291 and if we can make the same kind of improvement that would just be helpful so I think get our habits defending rebounding CJ's a good rebounder ball handling I think he's, he's a really good playmaker um, from all different sport you can kind of play him as a point forward at times and we'll put you know put him in the middle of the floor in a lot of situations where he'll just uh, just kind of enhance what he's, done. he's kind of strong he's got an incredible work ethic um, and he's been a joy You know, um, the the adjustments for players, I don't know, it's been, it hasn't been much different than any other, my other stops. You know, I don't know if it's, hey, we're in Pac-12, and it hasn't felt that way. Um, and because it's basketball, really, it's very, we're very fundamental. We're, I always use the expression, everything I needed to know, I learned in high school. And it's because my high school coach. So we, whenever it gets a little off-center, I take it back to that. Um, and then I think the adjustments I had to make is just, uh, building relationships with these guys. I think that's that's still the essence of coaching. Uh, we make a big deal about the data and that stuff, but it's really building these relationships. And what I'm excited about Pullman is it's a great place to have culture. It's a great place to get get to know your guys. We have space. I've, I've coached in San Francisco where you, <laughs> it's hard to get a space to just get together. In New York, even worse. So having some outdoor space, some living area, and, and we're going to have a barbecue, it's great. You're going to see a, a gritty team. That's it. Uh, I don't want to say style of play. We're, we have got to get where we defend, rebound, take care of the ball. That's uh, it. Hopefully, we'll be there. We'll, we've got to find ways to get stops, compete. Uh, no yeah. trouble finding a restaurant last night uh, to, uh, to eat. 
<laughs> no, as a little, as, as, don't don't black, we got black cypress in Pullman, which is it's phenomenal. Hey, yeah. hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Paisan, Italiano, and I hear you. Country is open on limited hours. So. Yeah, and I've. I've yeah. Cougar Country is back. I just yes, and I also I told them on the recycling bit that I introduced them to paper straws. So okay. people in California, and anyone that's ever been to Cougar Country and paper straws, that you got them to switch. Well, I just I said I introduced them to it. Okay, okay. We're okay. working on that. You're we're working. Getting, we're getting. Uh, Kyle, Larry Scott mentioned this morning just that they're working on a formula for a year from now where Pac-12 will go back to playing. Just missing two teams playing twice, so a 20-game schedule versus the eight current 18. How do you sort of envision that in terms of strength of conference and still getting the, the non-conference games that you want um, and just missing an opponent, two opponents? I don't know. I'm pushing for 22, Janie. Okay. Just make, yeah. just, just make it easier. Yeah. It's, it's tricky. They it's went a, through the, the A, B, C, and all these different. I'm like, okay. Look, yeah, let's I'm just go 22. It's hard to even say let's it. Just, or, 2022, 20, what's the difference? Um, I think the idea behind it is to strengthen the conference. Okay. Really, it's 20 high major games or whatever, in, in the, whatever the tier A, tier B, whatever, you're going to get more opportunities. Right. I have to re, re engage with those, you know, where there's top 50 games. There's just get more opportunities to, and the better we do outside the conference, um, in the, you know, if, you're, if our league is able to win 75% of the games out of the conference, it's, projected that you'll get six teams in the NCAA and that's kind of our goal is try to beef up the conference and we'll do our part best we can. A lot of these kids are being briefed, student athletes are being briefed today on this California law and maybe maybe Larry went over it with the coaches as well. I know it's on the horizon 2023 but I'm guessing you would still like to be in Pullman at that time and it's hard to <laughs> it's hard to recruit to Pullman. Uh, bite your tongue. Huh? <laughs> bite your tongue. Pullman's great. Friendliest place on earth, Jenny. Yes. No, I love. I went to school there. Uh, <laughs> okay. Then you verify what I just said, right? Yes. Thank you. you. How, how do you how do you see this affecting potentially affecting recruiting and budgets and just the challenges? I, I honestly don't. I think it's a great opportunity. In theory, it's great with if the players can their likenesses, their images. Uh, but there's obviously going to be unintended consequences of. <laughs> put a better, probably put a better package together in Seattle with Amazon. You know, I, you know, I've already mentioned Jess Ford. I'm keep keep promoting Jess Ford if down the road. We we'll get there, but but I, I don't think it's going to impact Washington State that much. I think it's going to be six and a half. To, we'll we'll do the best we can on that. But I said like, Bay Area's got some pretty Silicon Valley's got some pretty nice things they can probably image too. Can you see the kid who's coming off the bench and giving you two minutes at the end, who's from? rural Wyoming and suddenly is this you know beloved player on campus who who maybe gets a chance in his hometown to be on the Chevy dealership or something you know it, it might not just be yeah, something no, for I, star it, players I mean that you just you almost if you would have said bountiful Utah you would have described Jeff Pollard okay okay he really would I mean that he would I like I've already I've already kind of prepped him for a mayor mayoral candidacy when he's done okay. so it, He's been working on it, but I don't want no offense kid. to Glenn. He's but I'm like he'll he's beloved there, so he would be. Well, Glenn is serving his last term. So. Oh, is he? Yeah. Good. Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. So I was like, I'm being serious, but and, and you guys know, like he is he is a. I think all the athletes there, and as long as Minshew doesn't move back to town, we got a chance <laughs> with Jeff. But uh, but no, I could see that Jeff Fowler would be, and he is a great. And, he, and for us, I think in being in Pullman, it's it's about being a student athlete. It really is about like you can be, you can create culture and create teams. It, it's a very, the, the community embraces you, and we got it. You give back, and I think, and that's why I really love the job thus far. <laughs> we haven't lost yet, but um, they they give back, man, and we want, and they will root for you if you embrace what they're about. What's been your biggest challenge so far? Getting in and out of Pullman. It, it's no secret. Um, that that's the challenge. Uh, so, you know, we figured out it was easier to go from Amsterdam <laughs> Amsterdam to Seattle to Pullman is about as easy as going from Casper Community College in Wyoming. So it was like it took the same amount of hours. I'm like, well, we'll, we'll live in Europe. We'll do, we'll do, we'll do what we got. Yep, yep. And I heard we got one more route from Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> 2020, it's Denver. That residence <laughs> inn has been a nice addition in the last Awesome. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know it wasn't there before. No, it was not. It was oh, like, neither of those two. I know, I know. Yeah, no. You're hitting it at a good time, girl. No, I know. It's big time. 
It's great. It's the third time you're, you talk about nine new guys. You, your whole team is new. You did that at USF. It was different, but Columbia is almost the same. How tough is it when you walk in and like there's zero continuity and you're starting all over? You know, this one seems like the easiest one so far, probably maybe because it's the third time I've done it. And I always say, like, Columbia, we had, uh, I, you know, Columbia admissions was closed. I couldn't add anything. So yeah. I was looking at, and they had, <laughs> Joe left me 23 players. I was like, <laughs> what do I do with 23 of them? <laughs> and there's no, I had to create a JV program. So it was a whole different thing. I really had to, that. And then San Francisco had a familiarity with the league. We brought in a few extra guys. And this is the first time we had them out manned as far as, like, five, what, five or five stayed in. Four, at one point, we were down to three and CJ was in the draft. Yeah. And then two opted back yeah. in. We still had like 11, you know, so it's like it should feels like it's easier to get what we're trying to do um, with the basketball stuff. And, again, I think it's third time around. You know, obviously it's a bigger challenge, but I think as far as getting the basketball where it needs to go, it feels right now feels like we're, we're moving ahead of those things. So we've got, we've got more allies in the locker room instead of having to, you know. Like, and it's hard. It is hard. I, I always have – Great uh, respect for the guys that stay in the program because it's a little harder to take old dog new tricks. You know, if you got a blank slate, it's a little easier. Um, but uh, it's been great so far. Any real surprises, Kyle, that you guys that, you know, that coming in, like, you know, maybe they're a little bit better than I thought they were? Or? You know, it's funny with our, I think with our system, you know, you'll, we'll work individual work workouts and they'll play open gym and certain guys you think are doing really well and then we get to really stripping them down and, <laughs> a little premature, but I, um, I do think, uh, like I said, I'm scared to say it now because a month from now it could be different. But I do think uh, Guy Williamson has got a chance to be down the road to be a good player. But he's just, uh, he's got a, you know, the new one. We, we got a big 7 2 kid from the Ukraine. Probably takes some time, but he's he's got good hands. He's big, and no one plays with those guys anymore. So, you know, and it'll, as he gets older, and I think. Would you him? You know, I don't know. I mean, I, I you. You'd like to, I'd like to register them all, to be honest. My kids. <laughs> you know, I, got, I got a six-year deal. <laughs> so it's like, register them this year. Um, you'd like, because you're getting old and competing in this, you know. I think almost there's two paths to go, I think, in college basketball is get old, get stay old, or get one and done. And I think on what to do at Washington State, it's pretty apparent. That, so it's always been a, a decent model, you know, to keep guys and redshirt them and you know, you yeah, and, the, uh, and then with the fourth year, you can compete. With, you know, exactly, and it's a little trickier, I think, with the Power Five conference. You know, they're recruiting like there's expectations. Um, so we've been kind of. That's why I like international guys. They're not really coming here to redshirt. Though. That'd be the no, biggest catch. But, yeah. but if you can explain it to them, say, hey, this, you know, there's there's going to be. A, we don't know yet, but there'll probably be a couple guys that might be in their best interest, and that would. I want guys that want to stay there, want to be there. That's really vital. I think any job. But we 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 got to be invested in our guys. I got to hang in there and, and do well. I mean, that's what I, I had a moment. When I was recruiting a guy. Wouldn't she, wouldn't get a lot of recruit attention. I won't name who it is. I'm like, and I just bared down. I said, "What would Tony do? What would?" Tony? And I was like, ben, "I was like, I think you'd take him because you could coach him." And I and I know, and going back when Dick and Tony were there, like I just that's how I got to know those guys because we were recruiting the same guys when I was at St. Mary's and. He had to be like he wasn't worried about who was recruiting who. And he's like, what fit? And he still does it at Virginia. He's, he's amazing. He's taking, like, K.A. Clark was coming to UC Davis. He's starting the national championship game. So it is crazy. <laughs> so you got to be. Uh, Kyle, you talked about grittiness, that your team needs to have that grittiness to be successful. Most coaches want a tough and gritty team. I want to ask you, but how do you, can you coach toughness? Or is it something that you recruit? Are there things that you can work on with your guys to help them understand that this is how we have to win? we got to be tougher. Here's how to do it. I hope you can t coach it. You get there's a certain range. Obviously, recruit it. You got to value it. I don't think it's valued out when you're recruiting. You're like that guy's tough, you know. And you're like, yeah, I like the guy that jumps and runs uh, <laughs> fast. Um, but and actually, our hustle stats and everyone talks about it. Really, it's a grit chart. It really is. It's just basically getting guys to do. Well, actually, I would left <laughs> before I left down here. We we put dental floss in all their lockers. What does that mean? You floss every day? I do. Absolutely. I do. do you? Absolutely. Miss. I miss a lot. Wait, right here. Gosh, yeah, stay. Hold on. It must be an issue. I floss every night for sure. Every Kyle. day. You, what, what, you got one well, only one guy in my team flosses every day is Jeff Pollard. But I said, but it's it's the thing you. 
you have to do that you don't want to do, and that's kind of that's what we we put value on that stuff. Whether it's loose ball, a charge, and you know, everyone does it, but we're really we're basically negotiating for playing time on who's doing those things. And so, yeah, or so you don't get to play. That's that. I got to have the guts to do that. That's a, that's a part because there's there's going to be pushback from some guys, in every program every year because there's always one guy that's better than you thought and there's always one guy that's uh oh we were counting on him and he's struggling so that's that's why I don't mind sharing it because it's tough it's tough for me I've been doing been a program that's been doing it 20 years and it's still a challenge to certain guys we've got time for one more question if any hey coach regards to scheduling um, I know you did an excellent job here last year in San Francisco obviously you had a veteran team now you're tooling a new team together and there, I see a lot of buy games with uh, the Cape with the exception of the Caymans tournament is that more just done by design so you can get a feel for what this team is like and get prepared for the conference season? You're going to hate my answer. Okay. I, I had zero input on the schedule. Okay. <laughs> it was no, done. There was no, there was no, it was like, oh, that's done? Thank God. I mean, we tried to sign players. So it didn't, didn't <laughs> moving forward. We'll, I, just, it was like, hey, that's done? Great. Thank you. Thank you, previous staff. So that's the one. This, it takes time and energy to do that. We'll, moving forward, we'll be pretty strategic and like trying to put together um, you know, it, it makes sense. Like I said, it, it's a change, change for me. There's, I'm used to having two or three high major games. I got 20 or eight. Yeah, so it's, a, it's plenty. It's plenty. So, All right, thank you. That's thank all we have time for.